Thank you so much. And thank you to all of you who help to make this work. It takes many, many hands, and I love it that we have so many people so directly involved in our worship here. It, it means so much to me, but I know that it means as much to you. And I love how you stay involved in our worship as well. And you know I'm not one to just stand up there or stay up there or stay behind a podium. And, I'm, and you know, they taught us when we were young to, and t teaching you speech to look at the top of their head so that you don't have to look them in the eye. I just look you right in the eye, and sometimes I cry, and sometimes you do too, and often we laugh some too, and I hope that we do both tonight because that helps us connect with these lessons that we're here to learn. And I think that this is written in my sermon, uh, a note of it, but I want to tell you even now that I love, I finally learned that, you know, in the Jewish tradition, the Hebrew tradition, that the day, the day actually starts at dusk, you know, their, their fasting starts at dusk. And in the scriptures, you know, in the, gospel, in the um, creation story, and it says, and evening and morning was the first day, and evening and morning was the second day. And, and after all God had done, and God saw that it was very good, and it was very good. And so I want to tell you that gathering here at this time, dusk happens while we worship. So when we sing Silent Night and light the candles, it is Christmas. Because it will have, it, we will have gone beyond the, the hour of, of sunset. And so when we light those candles we, and when we leave this place, it is Christmas Day in the tradition. So that's kind of why we meet when we do that part of it. And I love that part of it. So it will get dark while we worship and we'll light the candles and just remember that our Merry Christmas has already begun. So thanks again to all who worship, and welcome to all who worship with us later. You know, you, at the bottom of our bulletin, it usually has the address for the website, and, and if you would like to get receive the notice when it goes up every week, we can put you on our mailing list, too. You just need to give us your um, email address, and so that those of you who watch later and others who join us, welcome to this time of worship this very blessed evening. Um, I think the only thing that I didn't say that was in my notes, I don't think I said Merry Christmas. Please stand if you're able. Please join me in the call to worship. Christmas is a time to proclaim. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. We proclaim a hope that is stronger than any trial. We proclaim a victory that is stronger than any defeat. We proclaim a peace that is stronger than any conflict. We proclaim a freedom that is stronger than any bondage. Joy to the world. And now we'll have the lighting of our candles. Tonight, we light all the candles. The first candle reminds us that Advent is a time to wait upon the Lord with faithful endurance. The second candle reminds us that Advent is a time to watch for God's presence with hopeful expectations. The third candle reminds us that the one we wait for, watch for, and prepare for is Jesus Christ, who is Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. As we light the fourth candle, we are reminded that Advent is a time to give praise for what God has done, for what God is currently doing, and for what God will bring to completion. Tonight, we light the last candle, the Christ candle. This candle reminds us that we are to proclaim the message of Christmas by celebrating what Christ has done and by sharing it with others. As the light from each candle fills this room, so may the light of Christ fill our world. Please join me in the union prayer. 
O oh God, we thank you for guiding us through our Advent journey, the waiting, watching, preparing, and praising. We are now ready to proclaim. Help us receive the glory of Christmas as we celebrate and rejoice that you have come to us through the gift of Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Our hymn of praise, O Come All Ye Faithful, number 182. Yeah. 
You may be seated. Our scripture lessons for tonight, the first is Isaiah 9, verses 2 through 7, page 553 in the Pew Bible. The people who walked in darkness had seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden, and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually. And there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The second reading is Titus 2. verses 11 through 14 on page 970 in your pew Bible. For the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, he is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. This is the word of our Lord.
gives a fresh meaning to angels we have heard on high. Wow. I love that Hebrew scripture in uh, 13, I think, at the beginning where it says, um, that when you, we have um, entertained angels unaware, <laughs> happens all the time, I think. And you know what? That's what my title is for tonight. It's, it's, it's really angel awareness. And probably I had a typo when I sent it, um, hurrying to get it to, um, to Jim and Lorraine before the sermon was really completed. It's not angle awareness. That's for uh, mathematicians and teachers. But it's angel awareness and incarnation. So we're going to talk about that. But before we do that, I, I probably could have let you do this, but um, I kind of wanted to do this part. So let us now hear this wonderful story from the historian Gospel Luke 2. And I like it that, that you see that it's from... I, I'm going to read, and it's the same version as the one that's in the bulletin, so if you want to follow along, you can. Uh, the, mine's just a little more worn than the ones you'll find in the, in the pews. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in the band ba ba in the bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Christ, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Here ends the reading of this good news. Thanks be to God. So this angel awareness and incarnation, real encounters with reality, that's what incarnation is, that's what, what the angel awareness helps with. God winks and burning bushes, those God wink moments and burning bush moments that some of us have experienced. So let's... Let's just ask, do you hear what I hear? Said the night wind to the shepherd boy. Well, let's examine that story too. 
by the song. Um, actually, there's an article about it that I looked up on my phone. The article was by Mary J. Dangle. We're going to come back to that article and the story, and I'll tell you who wrote that story. It was written in 1962, and I'll tell you how and where and why in a few minutes. So let's remember our stories, our encounters, and our music, too. Let us pray. God of glory, your splendor shines from a manger in Bethlehem into the darkness of human night. Open our eyes and hearts to Christ's presence in the shadows of our world so that we, like him, may become beacons of your justice and defenders of all for whom there is no room. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful. Kindle in us the fire of your love. Amen. So for many today, the world is a very frightening place. For too many, it's difficult to feed themselves and their families. For too many, home is not the comfortable place that it should be. For many, the, the discomfort of grief is overwhelming. For too many, governments have become too powerful and too insensitive and overreaching and overtaxing and unhearing. Then and now, incarnation must be our reality. Isaiah's message is as welcome and needed today as it was then. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep deep darkness, on them light has shined. So, people of the light, the world needs to hear and feel our message of hope. With the angels in our generation, let us bring the good news of a Savior. Let us remember and rejoice. Do you hear what I hear? Said the night wind to the little lamb. Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, a star, a star is dancing in the night. You know, many of us were still in elementary school when this song was written at the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Did you know that? At a time of distress for our nation. In fact, at that time in 1962, there were three young artists who expressed themselves in song that changed how we think about things. And you probably know about all three of them. You know that at that time, I think at age 19 or 20, Bob Dylan wrote Blown in the Wind, one of my favorite songs. I love how he captured the Ruha of Genesis, the, the wind of the Spirit, Blown in the Wind, how the Spirit is still blowing fresh wind, even today the wind of that Spirit. And also at that very same time, it was Noel, Noel Regney and Gloria Shane who wrote, I think it was Noel who wrote the words and Gloria who wrote the music, and it's usually the other way around for the two of them as they wrote these songs. A, a young couple who wrote, Do You Hear What I Hear? They brought hope to our generation, given as a war threatened between the Soviet Republic and the United States. And it was over Cuba. It was on our doorstep. Just ask some of our vet veterans about that. And these were, that's where this song began. Now think about those words. Do you hear what I hear? That message of hope of Christmas came then. It was six years ago in December, Mary J. Dangle wrote an article for the St. Anthony Messenger titled, Do You Hear What I Hear? The story behind the song. That's what I found when I looked it up on my phone. And I'm giving credit now, too, so it doesn't get bounced off of YouTube, I hope, because I've given credit to, to Mary. So I encourage you to check it out, too, as you listen to it once again. Now is then, in Israelites' time, Mary's time, and ours, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind as the wind of the Spirit and the star in the east guide us to the only one who can bring hope. I said a mouthful there, didn't I? Using our help from our artists. 
Let me repeat that. Now is then, in Isaiah's time, Mary's and ours, the answer, my friend, is blown in the wind, as the wind of the Spirit and the star in the east guide us to the only one who brings hope. Remember also the prophetic words of Hebrew 13, 1 and 2. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. The angels came to the shepherd. Have they been to your house lately? Probably. But how do we see them? So, that good news shared by the angels was indeed good news. They found the baby lying in the manger just as the Lord had, been made, had made known to them through the angel voices. It's in such ordinary voices and ways that news was made known while the world slept. Though there was no room in the inn, we can make room in our hearts and homes. As we show true hospitality even to strangers, maybe we will hear the angel voices too as we listen to the beautiful music of this season. Maybe the music will give voice to the angels among us. We are not always aware of the voice and presence of holiness. The hospitality and music of this season open our he he hearts and our ears to hear. The poets and musicians and artists and authors and children among and within us help us to hear and see you know, I want to see what my um, grandson Wyatt did. Even, and this is how I know that there are angels among us and that there are some who see. And you know, for tonight, it's like, who sees? Like, do you see what I see? The, the shepherds. What, what is, what, why the shepherds and, and not me? Have you ever thought about that? So I want to tell you that Wyatt was two years, two months, and a few days, and, and Sue was was dying there in September of 16 in my cabin in Vermont. And, and as I waited for her last breath, Wyatt said, Mimi's up there. And we didn't even know Wyatt was in the room with us. And we turned around. He was standing on the couch behind us. His mom had gotten him out of that room for just a little bit, so just to spare him. And so for some quiet for herself, I really think. And... He had escaped from her. She probably got her hands in the dishwasher and couldn't catch him. That's how it usually happened with Wyatt. And all of a sudden, we heard it again. We had said, what, what, Wyatt? Mimi's up there. He, he saw her go. I want to tell you that story tonight to tell you also that some of us recently, as I was with a family who were in a similar situation with their patriarch, they were waiting, and I got there in time to wait with them. And they said, we saw him go. And because Wyatt had told me once already, I'm a bit of a slow learner sometimes, but I, I had to get it that time. It's like, and I could see in their faces that like the shepherd boy, when he heard the angels, like Mary, when Gabriel spoke to her, see, do you hear what I hear? Like, we're still listening. And that's what this sermon is really all about. It's about keeping listening and opening ourselves to see and hear in ways that, you know, for so long we, we didn't know about all the stuff that was under the microscope or, or beyond the stars, but we know it, it's there. Well, what about in our faith? What about it? It's Christmas. So, this really reminded me of, the, of our lessons for today, or the lessons for last week, when, when that young 14-year-old had a conversation with an angel, with Gabriel. So, this past week, as I thought about the story, and Sandy and I talked about Wyatt and the angels and the shepherds, I asked her, what are your favorite memories of this season? What are yours? When have you known the presence and the meaning of this story in a fresh and new way? Well, just to lighten things back up a little bit, I, I did it to you now. This one, and this is the truth. This is from Sandy. And she'll verify this for you. She knew I was going to do this. At one Christmas candlelight service, Sandy's 
youngest, Nathan, was sitting on Grandpa's lap, and he looked up at Grandpa and said in his outside voice, the, the one that everybody hears, not Grandpa. Yeah, Sandy would wish he'd been whispering to Grandpa, right, Sandy? As the offering plate was passed, Grandpa, why do we always have to pay to get out of here? <laughs> Welcome to Christmas at our house. But also, when in your memory did you most closely identify with Mary or with the shepherd boy or with the angels or Joseph or the wise men? Sandy described for me an, a live nativity. I should let her t tell about it. She'll be happy to talk about it some more because we think we should do it next year. At our house, we could do it there in the Lions shelter and we could probably use the deck over at the legion for angels to gather and shepherds to talk to and have some shepherds placed below but so anyway listen to this what was kind of unique about this one and I, and what i want you to do is i want you to gather your own memories and tell them around your tables or around your tree to keep these stories alive because our bible was all an oral tradition and so our stories much of them are, too. They're not written down very well at my house, anyway, and I've got a few to tell, too. So Sandy said, this live nativity was in Gwinter, and she helped organize it. They had real sheep, donkey, cow, baby, angels, shepherds, and it was behind the school, behind an old school, right, Sandy, in a shed, because they had this shed that opened up so it could be, so they could have the the stable with the manger and all that. But one of the things that I love to hear about her story is that it, it was right behind the school so the back think now the back of the old school the rot, the rod iron the iron fire escape that went up so just picture that with the angel choir there and the spotlights that sh placed so they could shift between the angels to the shepherds to the stable so think about that as we think about being in the story ourselves. I love that idea of the angels above them. Angel choir members from all the churches in town, all ages, gathered on the fire escape where the spotlights, the light, the star, could find them, and the angels sang. And then, as often happens in situations like this, maybe it'll even happen tonight, the snow began during their nativity. Don't you love it? And the Catholic sisters helped with the little ones, and the night came alive, and the angels sang. You know, while I was in ordination training, we had a, a session with someone who, who helped interpret dreams. And one of the things that stuck with me from that session was she says, if you're, if you're trying to understand your dreams, look for the light. And if you discover the light in your dreams, then you probably will discover the meaning and the message. But as you examine your stories, look for the light. And think about that. As you examine your memories and you get ready to share them, look for the light, the places of light. Like in that story, it's easy to see the spotlights. It's easy to see the glow of the angels against the back of that school. On the, you get, see what I'm talking about? So look for the light as you remember and retell your stories, the star. And then you'll probably hear the angel voices, too, as you look for the light. So I want to tell you that what, just one of my own, very similar we, to Sandy's, in, in my family, I'm the second of seven, but I was only 29 when Dad passed out. He was the patriarch, and he always read this story. So it's like I have to work my way around the lump in my throat, and I stumbled once, probably because Dad was helping and I didn't realize it. But that's what happens to me. But I tell you that next. So so he died in August, and that next Christmas it was time for us because it was Dad insisted that we all get in costume, and Mom had them like robes and and. The girls all wore sheets and had tinsel in the hair, and, you know, we had this balcony, so the girls were all up on the balcony, and Dad sat in his big chair and read this story, and then there were always some little guys to be shepherds and a, and a few sheep, usually. So anyway, the first Christmas after that, I really was in no mood 
to get dressed up or do anything silly. So pounding, I went and got Dad's big Bible and got right in his chair, right headed, so I wouldn't have to dress up. I read the story every year after that, which was fine with me. And I was doing it in one, my house one time in Waukee, Iowa, and we were all there, and, and Chris was probably in junior high or high school, but and he was, uh, he, he kind of had a, a kind of girl friend, and so I asked him to be Mary and Joseph, and they both were pretty reluctant, but they did it. But it was Andrew that stole the show. You know, Andrew was probably about this high, and we had this bashful, great, big, fat, very fluffy cat that didn't like big crowds so much. Are you guys listening? And so the, we're, I'm reading the story, and all of a sudden, I saw that cat because it wanted to get out of it. I saw an opening when it got quiet enough that I could read the story. The cat thought it was going to escape. Not with a good shepherd nearby. Andrew's like, I mean, he just had, we were all cracking us up. He did kind of what I did to you on, on purpose. He just, like, he stopped the story until, like, in, in just a minute, like, he was back with that little lamb in the middle of the story, and the story continues. That's the story of our lives, folks. That's why we're here, because the story continues with laughter and tears and all the other pieces and the angels among us. And I think it's when we let go of ourselves that we get to see and hear sometimes, if you know what I mean. So in my 2020 Disciplines book, Reverend Steve Doty of of the PCUSA, a, a retired pastor, wrote this, and I want to use this to wrap it up. Isaiah offers a sweeping view of the gift we receive at the birth of a son. The prophet carefully develops the scene to the people of his day, steeped in darkness and sorrow. He announces the coming of light and joy. He points to the birth of a child. With soaring phrases, he proclaims this child will embody the life-nurturing names of the Messiah. Then at the climax of this prophetic portrait, Isaiah focuses on what lies behind it all. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Zeal is one of those thickly layered, rich, hard-to-capture biblical words in Isaiah's prophecy, and I would say also in the Titus scripture. You heard it too. It conveys single-minded, absolute devotion. What lies behind the gift of this child, what lies behind the gift is God's relentless, yearning, seeking you. Behind is God's stop-at-nothing desire to draw all to the saving ways of righteousness and peace. That's our mission. As we hover at the edge of Jesus' birth, may we look deeply enough to see the holy zeal, the holy steadfastness that brings it to pass. In these next hours, behind any special worship service that moves us, any silence that nourishes us, any gathering that brings us joy, may we see God tirelessly reaching for us all. May God be with us and fill us with holy zeal. Merry Christmas. Amen. Will you stand and let's sing together Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
seated. Let us pray. Holy God, heaven and earth are met this day in the newborn child, Savior of the world. We celebrate his birth, for in him you come to be close to us, that we might be close to you. Especially, O oh Lord, we give thanks for the birth, life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and for all that he means to us. We give you thanks for prospects of peace in the world, for confidence in your almighty love, for those who generously give, and for those who graciously receive, and for the church. It's nurturing us in the faith. God of all mercy, as you have come in Jesus Christ to be our guest, inspire our hearts to a true hospitality that welcomes all your children in your name. And especially, O oh Lord, we pray for those who have not heard your good news. We pray for the sick and the suffering, for those who know no laughter, only tears. We pray for the ones that we name aloud before you, even in this moment. Ian, Ray, Jim, Bill, Lord, we pray for all of these and those who are quietly considered yet in our hearts. And we pray for those who govern and rule, for those who are still enslaved by tyranny, for prisoners of addiction or abuse, for those who are still experiencing the horrendous impact of war or wars. And we pray for the church as a refuge for all. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Christmas offering comes forward, I invite you to stand together and sing the doxology as we bring our offering forward. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. God, we stand before you with humble hearts, so thankful for the gift that you have given to us, the gift of your Son, and also the gift of fellowship and the gift of the talents to serve you and your people. And Lord, we ask your blessing upon these humble gifts we bring. Through them, enable us to reach out in love to all the world, especially to those who have less than enough. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now prepare to sing our hymn of departure, Silent Night. It's number 186. I'm guessing you, most of you know most of those words by heart anyway. And let me just give you just really brief, simple instruction before you do. 
once your candle is lit, it stays straight up. Until it's lit, you can tilt it to the fire, but as soon as you got the fire, please, it comes, it goes straight up again. And remember, too, that you're in the pews with lots of others, and that beautiful long hair in front of you, keep your candle to yourself. And you, those of you who are like me, don't get it too close to your chin either. But, so just be safe and then enjoy the music and the candlelight as we bring in this Christmas morning. have the prophetic message more fully confirmed, you will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Let us pray. Everlasting God, the radiance of faithful souls, you brought the nations to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Fill the world with your glory and show yourself to all the nations through him who is the true light that bright and morning star, even Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Now, hear the benediction. I'm going to use the benediction that the Lord gave to Moses and Aaron to give to the people is found in the book of Numbers, chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the peacemakers. And as our recession will let us sing together. Joy to the world. <laughs> Thank you.
Christmas, go in peace.